Hello, welcome to Lazada Insider, featuring knowledge to mix a difference. We share trusted insights, forward-looking perspectives, and exclusive expert interviews to keep you ahead of the curve. Hi, I'm your host, Katrina, and welcome to Lazada Insider. Well, for many of our business audience here, you probably know what your consumers buy from you. But do you know the why behind the buy? The why is an important question to answer because behind every click of your potential consumer is a series of decisions made by them. And as a business, once you've got the fundamentals in place like good quality and service, it really boils down to what else can you do to influence a purchase decision to have shoppers buy from you, buy more from you, and buy more frequently from you. To answer that, we have our guest today. Uh, she is absolutely the expert for today's topic. We have Professor Lee from National University of Singapore Business School. She is the Associate Professor of Marketing and Associate Academic Director of EMBA Chinese Program. She's absolutely the right person to talk about today's topic because her research is actually focused on consumer judgment and decision making. Her many pieces of research work has been published in very high profile journals. Hi, Professor Lee. It's really great to have you on Lazada Insider. Hi, um, Katrina. Thank you very much for inviting me. So before we dive into today's topic, Prof. Lee, maybe you can let us know more about you. I think you already done a fantastic introduction. But yes, let me introduce myself again. Hi, everyone. My name is Li Xiuping. I am Associate Professor of Marketing at NUS Business School. National University of Singapore. I got my PhD from Toronto, University of Toronto, majoring in consumer psychology. And uh, because of that, I have been studying, researching, and teaching consumer psychology for the last 20 years, more than 20 years, actually. Well, you have certainly done extensive um, research and teaching, really cracking the code of consumer psychology. So tell us a bit more. Maybe let's Maybe from the fundamentals, in layman terms, yep. what is consumer psychology? I think in your introduction, you already mentioned about it. But uh, in layman terms, I think consumer psychology really studies why and how consumers buy. Could you maybe give us an example? Okay, so for instance, if you are a seller, you might want to know whether your customers buy your item mainly for its function or to enjoy a boast in their mood or self-image. So those are why questions. On the other hand, you might also want to know why your customers buy from you and how they buy from you. And you want to provide the right information to facilitate their decision process. Therefore, they can buy more and uh, um, buy the right product from your places. Excellent. And um, okay. for businesses, then why is it important uh, for them to understand consumer psychology? I think for our business, it is getting more and more competitive, right? In this competitive uh, landscape, it is essential for, um, for all the business owners to run their business more effectively. And consumer psychology actually help, uh, help all the business owners to be more effective. In what way? In the sense that if, you, if the business understand their customers or they understand consumers, they would know what kind of features to offer in order to answer that why question better, right? If you can offer the right products for your customers, they are more willing to buy and are more willing to pay more for the products. And secondly, you are able to do more targeted promotion effort. And with understanding of your consumers, with understanding where they buy and where they get information, you can provide those pr promotion materials, the right promotion material at the right place so you can be more effective. So in summary, I think not because I'm studying consumer psychology, I'm seeing that, but I think consumer psychology is extremely important for business to stay competitive, to um, predict consumer trend better so they can live longer. 
Yeah, what I'm hearing is that, you know, being able to understand consumer psychology can really make selling more uh, compassionate, more uh, effective, and uh, in a sense, also more predictable because you know what your consumers want. Um, and, you know, when consumers are delighted, and as you mentioned, um, in some cases, through a very targeted approach, they may be surprised by what you offer, then they're likely to make the purchase decision, they're likely to buy more. And, uh, yes. you know, uh, all the sellers are hoping that, you know, the consumers are being loyal to their brand and stores as well. So um, now if we look at the recent one and a half years, um, the pandemic has certainly accelerated a lot of the evolution in consumer behavior and shopping behavior. And, and now many consumers are shopping from both online commerce and the bricks and mortar stores. So I'm quite interested to understand, do consumers brain actually work differently when they're shopping online versus offline? Um, that's a very good question. As a matter of fact, when I start to majoring in marketing and in consumer psychology, um, I started to look at how internet changed consumer behavior. As a matter of fact, that is still relevant here. I think the key difference between online versus offline is not in terms of what consumers think differently. It is about what kind of information available online and offline, right? So for online platforms, the information that is available and can be uh, vast available are those visual uh, information, visual in terms of the verbal descriptions of the products or the imagery presentations of the products. And uh, more recently, uh, marketers start, start to use the videos to present. So they only touch two uh, fundamental senses that is relevant to consumers' experience or uh, relevant to product information. Um, but this is not all about all the product that consumers are looking for. So offline stores, the uh, what you call the brick mortar stores, are still relevant and still important for a lot of uh, business owners because those uh, physical stores, they offer the opportunity for consumers to, um, to have all the five sensory um, input or five sensory experience with the product. So that's the other five, the other three that is missing, vastly missing from the online stores are consumers can smell it, right? So some, sometimes it is important for customers, for consumers to smell the product and consumers can touch it, right? In consumer uh, research, we see that some consumers, especially for a lot of product categories, they care about this sense of touch, right? Uh, like my mom always want to touch, to feel certain things in order to decide whether this product is fresh or whether it is soft enough, right? So those kind of sensory input that is not available online. So uh, the marketers or the business owners might want to offer those opportunities for the consumer to try out. But right? of the last one, um, also relevant, taste, right? So for a lot of uh, food categories, taste is important for consumer to decide you know, whether it is delicious or not. So those are the sensories that is available only from online stores. So that's why I see it's not bring work differently uh, for online versus offline. It is more about information might be different or information that consumers are looking for might be different for online versus offline store. Um, so that's the first point I want to discuss here. I think it's not about if you are traditional offline stores, you just offer the uh, you know online store, just copy paste what you have in your physical physical store and offer it online. Uh, vice versa, it is not the case that as online players, you just offer exactly the same thing um, in offline store. Uh, as a smart business owner, you need to allocate your resource smartly. In the sense, you need to know, um, you need to present the information that can best communicate to your customers online versus provide the experience or provide more insight for um, and more uh, coherent experiences in the online, uh, in the uh, offline store, in the physical store, get uh, that opportunity to provide your customers with some immersive experience with your product. So that way, 
by differentiating the online versus offline experience, you are able to maximize the effectiveness of both stores. Yeah, I really like what you said, and I completely echo your view in the sense that you know online because of the distance and the inability to actually touch and feel the products, um, some consumers may find it a bit constrained to get those information. Uh, what is interesting is that you know we do see that in the recent um, few years, um, platforms like Lazada uh, actually provide a lot of the uh, innovative tools like you know live chat, like live stream, and AR and so on to recreate that experience that consumers um, would traditionally experience offline. So let's discuss a few more tangible examples of uh, applying mm -hmm. consumer psychology in e-commerce. Um, so if we look at the entire online consumer journey, there are two moments that are typically, I would say, have disproportionate impact on the purchase decision of consumers. And maybe let's focus on those for, for today's discussion. One is um, product discovery, and the second is towards the end of the consumer journey, closer to purchase. Um, on product discovery, which is basically when shoppers are trying to find, they try to explore the products through search or just browsing around. At this stage, how can businesses actually draw attention of the consumers? Okay, there are many ways to draw attention, but I think there is one consumer psychology knowledge I want to share with all the sellers. Uh, so it is really not the more the merrier. So you, a lot of times, consumer psychology has found that um, for business, for consumer side, it is the less is better. So what, why we see that? First of all, marketing 101. It's not that uh, the more customer you can reach, it is better. So a lot of times you, uh, you will find it is the right customers. Maximize the right customers you can reach. It's not just to maximize the number of customers. Um, so the right customer means those customers are your target customers. They value your products better. So that's related to the later part of consumer journey, right? So uh, if you reach the right customers, then you can convert them. You can make them to make a purchase. Otherwise, you will waste a lot of resources on those customers who are unlikely to be your customers. So yes, it is important to create brand awareness, to create awareness of your business. But I think one important thing to remember is you need to be specific. You need to know who are your target customers and trying to maximize the exposure to those customers. I think the secondly, we always think the more the better, right? So if you grab the opportunity, the more information that you deliver to your customer, the better. Uh, uh, it has been shown for message, it is important to get, to deliver to your right customers a strong reason to buy. It doesn't need to be a lot as long as you can broadcast to the right customers a very strong reason to buy, then it is going to be much more effective than you send out a thousand pieces of weak reasons. So I think I want to see the less is more. This is a key heuristic, um, okay decision rules I want to share with the sellers. To, to give you more examples on that one, it has been found, right? So although sellers believe the more options they provide to customers, the um, easier it is, uh, it's better for their customers. As a matter of fact, it's opposite. Um, consumer research has found that a lot of times more options can turn your customer off. So they land on your web page, but they see so many options and they don't know what, uh, which one to choose. And this more option become the reason why they don't really stay on and purchase from you. So again, it is the less is better, right? Let me give you a more uh, concrete example on that one. Um, yeah. I love li uh, live seafood, right? If a seller online really telling me, right, this is the best um, live seafood in Singapore, I think I'm going to really click and uh, um, take a look at that one and don't mind trying out. 
But if the seller just tell me this is a seafood and they offer um, different frozen ones, I might not interested in exploring more. So this is what I mean by need to be targeted, send out a strong reasons uh, to your target customers in order to maximize the opportunities to reach out to your good or targeted customers. Yeah, I, I, I really sort of, my biggest takeaway here is obviously less is more. You mentioned several times. Yes. I think um, it is absolutely right. Um, and, you know, to, to target at the right customers and deliver the right message really boils down to you understand your customers, understand, you know, who, um, who your products will actually appeal and make sure that, you know, your strong reason to believe or reason to buy is actually included in, you know, your advertisement, in the product description, um, you know, in your page that you're trying to sell your products. So we talked about this discovery, um, product discovery already. Let's maybe move on to, you know, the second very critical moment, right? Uh, we mm -hmm. talk about it um, using the word conversion. Basically, you know, we're trying to convert the potential customers to, to buy from us. Um, and that should be, you know, eventually the goal of the sellers for most of the time. So at this stage, how can consumer psychology principles be applied? And again, I think it's related to right now, I think the, the time from being aware to convert to the purchase is greatly shortened due to the online platforms, due to um, the, the uh, e-platforms such as uh, uh, Lazada. And because of that, all th the point I mentioned in the earlier point still applied here. You need to, again, know who are your target customers, know who your customers are, whether they are mainly female customers or male customers, right? Only those, um, only by understanding them, understanding who they are, why they buy from you, you are able to provide, again, the right strong reasons. Again, you don't need a lot. You need to provide a very strong reasons that enables them to buy from you rather than to search around and looking for alternatives. Right? So it's extremely important to buy, uh, to provide them with the strong reasons at the moment of truth. Right? So is that what we call the most effective way to call for action is to pro provide a reason that your customers cannot counter argue with you. Right? They will feel tempted to try and to buy from you. And of course, there is another thing that sellers need to focus on, they need to encourage loyal behaviors. That means if you get them in the past, the customers have tried your product in the past, then it's much easier to push them to purchase again, right? Do not forget about, again, creating loyalty. It is increasing hard um, in the internet age, but with the right understanding of your customers, with the right um, homework, you know, if you've done the homework, carefully understand your customers, um, you are able to do it, to create a group of loyal customers, to encourage them to purchase from you. So one thing that I found out to be effective probably for a lot of sellers, for instance, I'm talking about just provide a strong reasons to buy. It's related to what I said, when you provide customer with options, Right. For instance, if you um you sell bottle a water bottle online, rather than providing customers with like ten um, different versions of bottles, if you create a customer choice site or you provide two options, one is definitely looks worse than the other one. Surprisingly, you will find that going to be more customers buying more of those better options from your website, because that is what I call you provide a reason for your customers to buy, right? A, a, a bottle that looks nicer than the other one, for instance, but uh, cheaper, um, cheaper in terms of price. That's what I call a strong reason to buy. If you look at uh, the real world, like for instance, when I um, lecture it in class, 
One of my students, this is a vivid example I remember from classroom. One of my students, when I talk about this, um, in, in psychology terms, we call it attraction effect. Basically, you provide a decoin, a, a worse of uh, options. Customers are more likely to buy the target item you want to sell more, right? So one of my students just told me, oh, my mom, that's, my mom did that, right? Mom did that in her furniture store. That's probably be the reason why she always have that ugly um, furniture, that piece of very ugly furniture in her store because she want to buy, um, to want to push or to, she want customers to buy the other uh, furnitures more, right? So that's, that's something that I think might be useful for the sellers. Don't think that you, by offering more options, you're uh, always providing more benefits or uh, offering more uh, freedom to your customers. A lot of time, more options make it harder for your customers to make a decision and make them decide not to buy. Yeah, so what I'm hearing is that, you know, even um, if let's say we give um, consumers options, then those op options also need to be more strategic rather than just, you know, list everything you have online. Yeah, yeah. So um, in consumer psychology, there is a one prominent figure. Um, it's a Richard Seller. He won a Nobel laureate a few years back. So he had this book talking about nudge. Basically, I think all the business uh, person need to be a nudger, uh, trying to construct the choice site for their customers, make it easier for the customers to make a purchase. Of course, need to be socially responsible, right? So the, the product they sell need to be socially responsible, but at the same time, they can strategically construct the choice site for their customers. In, in, in order for customers to make a decision earlier, at the same time, benefit the business as well. Excellent sharing and very interesting. Uh, we yeah. probably have um, the time to hear one last advice from you to businesses in uh, online commerce space. Um, so I guess all the business, all the business owners need to take the perspective of the customers. You will be surprised, although everyone is consumers uh, ourselves, but when it comes to understanding your customers, unless you put your feet in the shoes of your customers and walk, walk through their customer journey, you probably won't understand the pain point of your customer 100%. So um, it's probably not advice, but I think I would encourage all the business um, or the sellers online, regardless small or big, to take, to walk through your customers their own buying journeys in order to understand um, their goals better, in order to understand what prevent them from buying from you. Okay. So you, yeah. you probably do it yourself to understand your customer better. Yeah, like re sort of experience um, yeah. that journey as a consumer um, yes. yourself. Yeah. yeah, undercover, <laughs> undercover customers probably will <laughs> understand, <laughs> right? You will understand yeah. your customers' um, pain or join better. Yeah, I, I really love uh, what you share with us, Professor. Yeah, and I think uh, through here. our <laughs> through our conversation here, I, I think the big takeaway um, is that for business already, I would say with great product and services to realize mm -hmm. even sales, it actually calls for a genuine interest in understanding what your customers actually yes. deeply care about. Um, and, you know, uh, the, the consumer psychology principles and examples that you gave, right, essentially is fundamentally try to make the shopping experience better and, you know, as you mentioned, easier. So, you know, treat every interaction with your potential shoppers as a great opportunity for you to, you know, convince them about yes. your offerings. Um, yes. And, you know, sometimes it takes simple tweaks and simple interventions to get dramatic effects. Yeah. So excellent sharing, Professor Lee. It's really great discussing with you. Pleasure is always mine. Thank you. This is Susanna Insider. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you click follow and subscribe so you don't miss our latest insights and expert interviews. Thanks again for joining us. Until next time, take care. La, da, da.